Hey Siri, turn on my super awesome filming setup. Right, so I've spent a large amount of money on Apple products over the last year, and in fact, over the last like, 10 years since I've been in the Apple ecosystem. And I often get messages from people being like, hey, why are you such an Apple fanboy? Why do you love Apple products so much? And the main reason isn't that they're just beautifully designed or they make me feel really cool. The main reason is that I use tech as just a tool. I couldn't really care less about the products, even though I'm a bit of a tech nerd. I just want the products to do the job and to help me be more productive and creative and to help my learning or whatever the thing is that I'm trying to do. And to be honest, Apple isn't the only one making decent products anymore. This is the Microsoft Surface laptop. It's pretty solid. It's quite pretty, it's beautifully designed, it comes in blue, which is my favorite color. But the reason that I swear by Apple products and I'm unlikely to change to anything else anytime soon is that when you have more of them, they just work so beautifully together in an ecosystem that just makes a lot of sense. And these various ways in which these products work together genuinely does help me be more productive. It helps me save time. And that means I can spend more time doing the things that really matter to me. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my 12 favorite ways in which all of my suite of Apple products works together to help me be more productive. If you're within the Apple ecosystem, yourself, then some of these are things you might be familiar with, but hopefully you'll find some interesting tips and tricks and hacks that you can use to make your workflow more productive as well. Let's start by talking about continuity markup. Now continuity is the term that Apple gives when it talks about how stuff available on one Apple device is automatically available on another. And so whatever you're trying to do, you're always using the best tool for the job, whether that's your iMac or your MacBook or your iPad or even your iPhone or your Apple Watch. And one of my favorite features of continuity that a lot of people don't know about is continuity markup. Now this thing is absolutely magical because the other day I was filling in some forms that a solicitor sent me to because I'm trying to buy a house as an investment. And because solicitors in the UK and probably elsewhere are pretty old fashioned, what they sent to me was this long ass word document that I had to put handwritten and signatures and had to fill these forms and they were all like random boxes rather than actual check boxes. And initially I tried filling it in just using Word and became really frustrated. But then I remembered that continuity markup is a thing. And so I used the markup feature to send the document straight to my iPad where I had the Apple Pencil. And then I could just annotate it by hand, do a hand-drawn signature, tick the boxes by hand rather than having to create some weird square root sign to sort of masquerade as a tick mark. And everything I was doing on the iPad was automatically reflecting on my MacBook. And so I sent the form off to the solicitor and it was happy days. And the fact that continuity markup existed made me more productive in that space. And I've used this dozens of times over the last few weeks for filling in various forms, for annotating various documents. It's ridiculously helpful. Secondly, let's talk about Apple Notes. Now I'm a big fan generally of note-taking apps. I have dabbled with all of them. Notion, Rome, Evernote, Obsidian, One, note, all of them. But the one that I've found myself using for the last few weeks is actually Apple Notes because Apple Notes also has these like really useful continuity features that the other note-taking apps just don't have. The main one is that because I carry my iPad around with me all the time, I can just tap on the screen with my Apple Pencil when the iPad is off and it will automatically create a new note in Apple Notes. And so in that sense, my iPad kind of acts as a napkin that I always have with me that I can always take notes on or draw a diagram or write anything I want. And this is great because whatever I write or draw on the iPad automatically gets synchronized across all my devices and basically within like two seconds appears on my MacBook and iMac as well. This is quite useful if I'm brainstorming some video ideas and I wanna sketch out a quick thumbnail or do a little spider diagram because sort of drawing things visually helps me figure things out. Those diagrams automatically sync and then I could just type proper text on my Mac because I'm faster at typing on my MacBook than I am handwriting with the Apple Pencil. And while those other iPad apps like GoodNotes and Notability and stuff, they're all pretty good, it's just too much of a faff to actually create a new note. And so the one I've been defaulting to recently is actually Apple Notes and that works beautifully thanks to this continuity stuff they've got going on. Thirdly, we have AirDrop. Now AirDrop is completely magical as well. Um, this is just a thing that no other phone manufacturer seems to have done very well at all. And that's being able to wirelessly transfer files between between Apple devices. And so for me, the most common use case is if I filmed something on my iPhone as B-roll for a video or as part of a vlog, and I wanna transfer that to my Mac to do some editing on, then I can just hit share, hit airdrop, and I can wirelessly share the file without having to plug anything in. It's also really helpful if, for example, I've taken photos of friends and someone says, oh, can you send me the photos? If they've got an iPhone, it's very easy. I can just airdrop them a ton of photos at a time. Whereas if they don't have airdrop, then I have to share, I have to go on WhatsApp and I have to WhatsApp it to them. And then there's like a limit of 10 and then it kind of compresses the photos. Airdrop is just so good. It's great for screenshots as well. Like if I'm editing a video or writing a blog post and I wanna put a screenshot from my iPhone into the document, I just take the screenshot, hit share, hit airdrop, and it automatically transfers to my iMac or to my MacBook. 
which is great. Fourthly on the list, we have the universal clipboard. This is another completely, completely magical thing that I've now started taking for granted. But since I've been testing the Microsoft Surface laptop, which doesn't have universal clipboard features, I've realized how much I take it for granted and just how magical a feature it actually is. And the way it works is that anything that you copy on an iPhone or an iMac or an iPad or a MacBook, anything you copy is then available as a paste command on any of the other devices. And I find myself using this many, many times in a day. And it's often when doing stuff related to online banking. So because I've got accounts with like Monzo and Tide and Revolut, these are mobile only banks that don't really have decent web interfaces. But often if I'm getting an invoice from someone or someone I have to pay, they'll send me like a PDF invoice that I'm looking at on my MacBook because I've got Slack open. And then it's a case of, okay, so I've got the account details on my Mac. How do I get those account details onto my iPhone? And before, or if you don't have Universal Clipboard, you have to like, okay, account number one, two, eight, six, three, four. Oh, okay, is that working? Oh God, you know, I have to transfer money to this solicitor and they've given me like an 18 digit reference and I have to type it manually or I have to copy it and then email it to myself or I have to copy it and text it to myself. That's all a complete nightmare. But thanks to the universal clipboard, I can literally just copy the reference from my Mac and then just hit paste on my iPhone and it will automatically paste it in. And every time this happens, I get a burst of dopamine release thinking, oh my God, this is just so cool. Coming in at point number five, we have the continuity camera. And this is a fancy way of taking a photo with your iPhone or a sketch on your iPad and it automatically being added to the document that you're working on. And so for me, when I'm drafting my videos in Apple Notes, and then after I draft them in Apple Notes, they'll go into Notion, which is how I interface with the rest of my team. But when I draft them initially in Apple Notes, there's often something that I want to sketch on the iPad. Or if I've taken notes on a physical piece of paper in my Leuchtturm 1917 notebook, I want to take a photo of that and insert it into the note because it's relevant to the video. Now, the old school way of doing this would be to take the photo on my iPhone, airdrop it to my iMac, and then copy and paste it into the note. But I can save time with continuity camera because I can just hit the insert attachment button on my Mac and I can click take photo and it'll automatically open up the iPhone camera. Let me take a photo and it immediately gets inserted into the note. It saves like three seconds of my life every time, but every time I do it, I think, oh, you know, I'm really glad I've saved this three seconds of my life. And then I probably spend three seconds like appreciating the feature, but oh well. At number six, we've got the instant hotspot. Again, this is something that I used to, I just completely take for granted on Apple devices. But now that I've been trying out the Microsoft, the Windows product, it's like, if you want to hotspot your phone, then on Windows, you have to like, you have to like turn on personal hotspot on your phone and then you have to go on the Wi-Fi settings and then you have to enter the password if you're doing it for the first time. And it's just a bit of a faff setting up a personal hotspot. Whereas if I'm on the iMac or the MacBook or the iPad and the internet is bad or there's no Wi-Fi or whatever, then I can just automatically enable personal hotspot with just a single click on my Mac. And that is amazing. Yeah, I've just always taken it for granted. I never quite appreciated just how cool that is until I started testing the Windows device as well. At number seven, we've got cross-platform messaging. Now this was the thing that attracted me to the Apple ecosystem initially like nine years ago when it was like all the rage that you can answer text messages on your Mac or on your iPad, mostly on the Mac because I'm, I've always got my laptop or my iMac in front of me. And it's cool enough that if someone else with an Apple device uses iMessage to send me a message, I can reply to them from my Mac rather than having to go on my phone and typing with the really crappy phone keyboard. But recently, I don't know how recently, I think they've, they've added this feature that lets you get actual SMS text messages on your Mac. And so if, for example, someone is actually texting me who doesn't have an iPhone and there are those green bubble people I can see and respond to them on my Mac. Or if I've got two-factor authentication enabled for something and I get a text to my phone, that text will often show up in my Mac as well and I can autofill the thing from the Mac, which is kind of cool. Point number eight is the ability to make and answer phone calls from your phone, but actually to make or answer them on the Mac or on the Apple Watch or on the iPad. There's lots of times where this has actually come in handy. So I think I've answered a call on my Apple Watch like three or four times in my life. I remember one of them was when I was on a boat and I was punting. I was like, you know, there's this river in Cambridge and you punt along it with like a little pole. And my mum was calling because she was like visiting Cambridge and wanted to find out where we were. And I didn't have my phone with me because it was in the back because I didn't want it to die if I fell in the water. But I got the call on my Apple Watch and I answered the call and I was like talking to my mum on the Apple Watch while like doing this punting thing while looking like a bit of a twat because I was flexing the Apple Watch. So that was really cool. That's only happened a few times. Uh, more often what I do is like, let's say I'm on the sofa and I'm just chilling on the iPad, watching something or reading something or taking some notes. And then my mom calls me either on FaceTime or by normal call. 
Instead of getting off the sofa, finding my phone, or and then answering it, I can literally just answer the phone call on my iPad or answer the FaceTime on my iPad, and that's quite nice. And the third main way in which I use this is if I need to call customer support for anything, I'll often make the call using my Mac because then I can do stuff on the computer while I'm on a hold with customer support for like half an hour without having to either hold my phone up to my ears or like have it on speaker and have that crappy music playing because I can just very easily use my Mac using the microphone on the Mac or using my proper microphone to make and answer the phone call. At number nine, we've got Sidecar. Sidecar is pretty cool. It lets you connect your iPad and use that as a external wireless display for your Mac. I don't use it a lot when I'm at home because these days I'm using the iMac and it has a big enough screen. But if I'm at like a co-working space or a coffee shop and for some reason I need the extra screen real estate, then I can always Sidecar into my iPad and it works instantly with basically zero lag. And it's always kind of magical when it happens. And finally, at number 10, let's talk about handoff. Now handoff is the feature that these, again, the Apple ecosystem has where if you're working in one app, you can resume the same thing in the same app on a different device. And so this works in browsing with Safari and Chrome. Let's say I'm browsing something on Safari on the iMac and then I wanna go for a Wii. I can go on my iPhone and it will tell me what tab I've got open on Safari on my iMac and I'll, I'll be able to continue my browsing session while I'm going for a week. It's also kind of nice with Apple Pages. So I'm writing a book at the moment and part of the drafting that I'm doing is in Apple Pages just because it works nicely on Mac and iPad and all that stuff. And so if I'm working on a section on the Mac and I wanna go onto the sofa because I want a change of scenery, I can just resume it using Pages, using Handoff on my iPad, connect the Apple Magic Keyboard to the iPad and then I can continue typing away and it's all very seamless. I don't do this very often because I don't often like decide, hey, I'm gonna write my book on the sofa. But when I do, and the pages thing actually works with handoff, I just think, damn, this is pretty nice. And so those were some of the different ways in which like the Apple ecosystem products work together in a really nice way to help me be a little bit more productive. Yes, this sort of thing is not really gonna move the needle for your productivity. Let's be honest about that. It's sa shaving off a few seconds with every interaction. But I personally think those few seconds add up and I'm always a fan of trying to be most efficient at doing everything. And the reason I buy all these Apple products is because broadly they get out of my way and they let me do the things that I actually care about. Whereas if I'm working with Windows stuff, sorry, Microsoft, it's a nice product, but I, I often feel like I'm having to fight against the system to do what I want. If you're interested in more ways of being productive, you might like to check out this video over here, which is a video that talks about the actual needle moving things that do improve my productivity that aren't based around squeezing a few seconds of efficiency here and there. So hopefully you'll like that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.